Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. Today we are diving into the world of AlloyDB for PostgreSQL, a cutting-edge, fully managed PostgreSQL compatible database service designed to meet the demands of your most critical enterprise workload. AlloyDB seamlessly merges the power of Google's infrastructure with the versatility of PostgreSQL, one of the most renowned open source database engines. The results which gives a superior performance, scalable and availability of your data options. In this challenge lab, you'll be given a number of tasks to perform. These tasks have been covered in the quest, create and manage AlloyDB instances. You will not be given step-by-step -step instruction, but you'll be given certain directives which you must follow, such as naming of certain resources or some guidelines about how to solve the problem. The content of this challenge lab will be most applicable to database administrators who have been taxed with setting up a new AlloyDB instance for their company's operational or analytics data set. This lab is designed to test the abilities of students who have completed the Create and Manage AlloyDB Instance quest. So whether you are a beginner or a seasoned tech explorer, Join us in this practical exploration of AlloyDB's capabilities. Don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe, and ring the notification bell as we tackle this challenge lab on AlloyDB. Let's get started. As usual, we'd start our lab. We'd launch the lab with the required credits. Then we'll open our lab in an incognito window. I'm going to grab my password with me. So I'm signing into my lab. Paste my password. Um, I understand this. So this is our home page. And I have to agree to the terms and conditions before I proceed. Then agree and continue. So here is our home page, and as usual, let's um, activate our cloud share and list the active project name and the um, active account name before we move forward. So we're going to continue here. So you can see it's provisioning our cloud share machine, and after that is done, it's going to connect to our cloud share instance. So here we are. Let me increase the font. So first thing, the gcloud auth list. So I'll provide this. So this is the active account, and we can list the project ID. So this is our project ID for this lab, and I think um, we can get started with the tax. So for tax one. And this is just the scenario. So you are a corporate database administrator. You've been tagged with standing up a new AlloyDB for PostgreSQL database for your company's HR operation group. And you have been provided a list of specifications for this database related to tables to create and data to load. So let's get started. For tax one, we want to create a cluster and instance. So if there are two ways to create a cluster and there are two ways to create an instance. You can either use the CLI or you can use the um you can use the command line interface or you can use the cloud console. So for throughout this lab, I'll be majorly using the cloud CLI, which is the CLI. I'm going to be using the code format so that it's easy for you to copy the code along with me and um, solve the lab. So for the first one, we want to create a cluster. So if you take it, I have a sheet here whereby I've um, written out all the necessary codes needed for this lab and you can just then copy them and paste them inside as we get to those stage. But if you take a look at this downward version, you can also see a sample code to create a cluster. So but I'm just going to come here and this is what I need to create a cluster. So I have to replace this with my region and my project ID for this specific lab. So taking a look at this region, my region here is US first one. So my region does not change. 
but if your region changes you have to also change your region so the ne next part is my project id so this is my project id now definitely change so i have to replace my project id here with the new one and then um i can also replace it here also because i would need to replace it here also and i think um and i also need to replace it here and here so I replace it here let me just do that once and for all so make sure you replace um those parts and if your region also change make sure you replace your region also if the name of your lab changes the name of your cluster changes you also have to replace the name of your cluster yeah so that's um fine i'm just going to come here and copy this then i'll go to my cli and paste that click on enter so if you take a look at the naming i'm using here it's the same naming as was required for me to use in this lab so lab cluster this is the password peer network and these are all what i'll be using in this place but if your own um, details change then you should also change your details here so let's um, keep going so our cluster has been created so the next thing we want to do following the instruction is to also create our instance so after we've created our cluster we also have to create our instance and this is the details for the instance that we are going to create so we are using a machine type of 2 pcpus and 16 gigabytes in memory this is also a template code you can use to create this and i also have something like that here so you can use you can see that the cpu count here is two and these are the details so i've replaced my project id and i can just copy this and come here also and paste it here so if you want to use the um, the cloud console you can also use the cloud console so in the previous lab in this quest i used them um, the cloud console and i used the command line so you can just um, you watch those videos and see how to spin up them on on the cloud console but they are pretty um, straightforward so this may take um, a little while i'm just going to fast forward it and see at the end so welcome back you can see this is completed so it took around 9 to 11 minutes to get this done so before we proceed let's take a look at some of the things that we've um, created for this lab so um i have to go to databases under viewer products so under databases i have my halo db here i can click into halo db dismiss this dismiss terminal so you can see that these are the um this is our lab cluster this is our lab instance and we were hacked to copy the private ip address of this so we can just um copy it along with us and take note while you are copying please don't copy the port number if you copy the port number it's not going to work you only have to copy the ip address you link so this 10.40.0.2 so it may differ it may differ a little bit on your home end I'm just going to copy this and maybe save it here then so that I can pick it when I need it. So the next thing I have to do is to go into our database through a AlloyDB client. So under Compute Engine, Virtual Machines. So this is our AlloyDB client that we use to connect to our AlloyDB database. And I can just um, SSH into that. So it's transferring the necessary SSH keys. And then I'll authorize the request. So it's connecting to the SSH server. And here we are on our SSH. So let me see if I can increase the font size of this also to large. Yes, yeah, so I think yeah, we are good. So following the instruction, the next thing, so we can check our progress for the previous tasks. And so our score has populated. So we are probably done with um, this. Yeah, so for tax two, we want to create tables in our instance. So I've already connected to the um, LADB client in the previous instruction. So the next thing is to just copy this guy. So when I copy this command, um, what I'm doing is that I want to pass the LADB um, IP address to this environmental variable so that anytime I need it I can just call it from this variable so the IP address we copied previously which was here 
we can just um, put it here please don't copy the port number with it just the ip address so after that then i'm going to persist it into this um file into this file so that anytime i need it i can just get it from here so come here so i use the echo command so i'm echoing what is in this environmental variable which is what is here into this um text yeah so i think that is also done so the next thing we want to do is to log in into our PostgreSQL, which using the PSQL terminal. So using the PSQL terminal, let's log into our PostgreSQL library. And this is the um, LIDB host address. This is the username Postgres. So it's asking our password. So the password that we are using is chain taking me. Just then paste it here. Click on enter. And now we are in our database. So the user here is Postgres. So let's um, continue. So the next thing we want to do is we want to populate data into three tables. So the three tables majorly are region, countries, and department. And this is a sample DBL about uh, a sample DDL of how to which stand for data definition language of how to create a table with the necessary columns and also using the um, and also setting the primary key of the table. So I have the commands here that you can just copy. So you don't need to change anything here. If nothing changed from your end. So I'm just going to copy this, come to this place and paste it here. So it's going to create the table for us and it's also going to set the primary key to region ID. So the next thing, you can also create the table for the countries and the department. So enter. So it's just going to do the same thing. It's created the table, also set the primary key. And for the last one, which is um, department, I'm going to copy this and paste it here. So it has also um, done that. So let's go back to the instruction and see what's going on from there. So we've added the one for region, added the one for countries, added the one for department. So that's um, about it on tax two. For tax three, we have to load sample data set into the tables. So we've created our empty tables now. And if you want to be sure that if any of the table is empty, you can just then um, do select star from any table. Let me select star from department. And yeah, so I have to add, I have to add a semicolon there. Oh, I used the wrong spelling here, so please um, confirm your spelling while you are typing department, so confirm the spelling please, and you can see it's returned them zero row, so it's an empty table, please confirm your um, spelling while you are typing so that you, if you if you type a wrong name, it's not going to return anything, and you have to add your, your column here at the end before it runs it. So that's um, regarding that. So the next thing we want to do is to load data into our tables. Let's load data set into our tables. And then we have some sample data sets to load into region, to load into country, and to load into our department table. So I have also, um, also have a command here. You can just use to load everything. And I'm loading everything. In, so I'm using an insert command, insert into these are the columns that I want to insert into and I'm passing the values there. So you can also insert it one by one by saying insert into region and um, put these um, values, put this in, in, in place of putting region and ID, you just put one to then values and doing it one by one. But I'm just doing everything once from here. So let's insert into, so we've inserted, you can see four. So let's insert also into our countries table. Click on enter. We've inserted nine entries into our country table. And last one, which is department. Copy this. Let's um, insert into department. We've also inserted into department. 
So we can just um, do a spot check on any of them and see the data. So let's do a spot check on the one for countries. Set star from countries. So these data are not they are not large, so I can afford to query everything. And you can see the countries. So the country ID, the country name, and the agent ID. So that's um, regarding that. And I think um, we should be done for tax theory. So let's check our progress for tax theory. Yeah, we are also done for tax theory, which is fine. So the next thing is to create a read pool instance. So we would create a read pool instance for one of our instance. So for, for the instance that we had that we have in our cluster. And you can also create a read pool instance from using the console or using the command line interface. Like I mentioned before, I'm going to use the command line interface. But I can just show you how to do it using the console. So if you go back to your databases. So this is our database. So if you click into this instance, which is the instance from here, then when you go down, you can add a read pool instance through this path. But I'm not going to use um, this route. I'm going to use the command line interface. Yeah, so I'm just going to go back and grab my code. And this is my code for create for creating a, a read pool instance. So you can see gcloud it's a, it's in better at the moment already the instance is create so this is the read pool instance for this one lab instance you know our first instance is lab instance so i'm doing a i'm now naming the read pool instance lab, lab instance as p1 then the instance type is read pool before it was um primary when we were creating the primary instance but now it's a read pool so the cpu count is two so let's confirm the cpu count that they want us to use here so the node count is two the vcpu count here is two also so i have two in cpu count i have the node count as also two my region is three years west one the cluster that i'm creating the instance is our lab cluster and i'm passing in my project id so i will just um, copy this command and go to my um, cloud shell and paste this command here hit enter so please don't run this command in the ssh menu here you have to run it in the cloud shell so you can typically even close out from this so you can close out of this yeah so you can see it's creating our instance it's creating our read pool instance for us and uh, it may take a while so i'll just then um, fast forward it and see at the end yeah so we are done with um, this now and the next thing is to also create a backup for our our instance so if you go back to the instruction you can see that we can we can check our progress for this first which is tax for yeah so let's create a backup and um, you can create a backup by using the command line interface and also by using the console let me just show how to do it using the console but i'm going to do it using the command line interface so i can grab my backup here so this is the command to create a backup using the instruction that was specified here so you can see the name should be lab backup we are also using the name lab backup here and this is the cluster this is our region and our new project id so make sure you change those um, changing values when you are copying the code if you use my values they will be different from yours and you would not um, end up getting you don't end up getting error and you not you would end up not getting the full mark for this so um just a quick demo on just a quick demo on how to create backups from this so under this um going back a bit so from here you can click on backups and you can create your backup from here but i'm going to use the command line like i mentioned so I'm just going to paste this command here, then click on enter. So it's going to create our backup for us and it should um, also get completed. So I'm going to fast forward it and see at the end also. So now our backup is done and it took um, less than three to four minutes, which is um, pretty fast. So I think that's all for this lab, but let's just then um, confirm. So let's check our progress for this last tax. 
and let's see if we are good to go yeah so we are also good to go for tax five and we should have um, 100 100 in no time so we have our 100 100 now so congratulations on completing this challenge lab with me and for those who followed me all through the quest thank you very much for following me for following through with me all through the quest and i hope you've you are now more comfortable administering and migrating your alloy db instances and also accelerating analytical queries on your alloy db instance so that's pretty much everything for this particular quest on create and manage alloy db instance and enjoy your new digital badge and you can also share it with your friends so that they can also get to learn from this so thank you very much for your time and don't forget to comment your thoughts in the comment section i'm happy to respond to any comment you may have and also make sure you like this video and subscribe to my channel so that you don't miss up on upcoming videos bye for now see you in the next lab